The trio of sweaty long cocks coming into an NFL backfield near you. Brendan Albert is here. I am Adrian FedQ. I swear, the Eagles, they, they just made this pick as a troll job there in the fourth round just to add to their puns along the defensive line. Oh, yeah. The pun game is strong with that defensive line last name. But you know what? Especially when you get into that fourth pass round, you're drafting upside guys. You know, you're usually drafting guys with upside. Josh Sweat, through the roof upside, absolutely has the ability to potentially been a – I would have given him, if he was healthy, a mid to late first, early second round grade on him. But that injury history is very real. Yeah. Uh, from what I read, he didn't always practice because of his knees. He suffered a I, – I, I, don't, I don't even know how, how to put it because the, there's no words to describe it, but he basically tore everything in his knee uh, in, in a high school, in a, when he was at high school. Uh, so ACL, PCL, MCL, he tore everything. Just a cataclysmic injury. It was ridiculous. It was so bad, he almost had his leg amputated. Think about that for a second. You're 18 years old, and you tear your knee. Unfortunately, that happens in football. But to the point where they almost amputated his leg. That's very real. And that knee history, knee history didn't exactly stop after that. Had problems with his meniscus in college, too. There's a reason he slid down here to the fourth round. But the concern is maybe this is a one-contract guy. Maybe this is a guy who never actually is healthy enough to sign the second, second contract. That said, your position of strength here in the Philadelphia Eagles. He maybe gets 10 rushes a game. Maybe that helps you know, prolong his career a little bit. Yeah, that was the next point I was going to get into. You actually just stole my thunder. So, Sorry, so good job there, pal. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, like you're you're going to be in a rotation here in Philadelphia. Jim Schwartz likes to rotate guys in and out as it is, and because there's so much depth, uh, his, his snaps are going to be limited. So you're going to be using him to his strengths, and and, uh, and also you're going to prolong his career a little bit. But I, I do agree with you. I mean, I I don't think he's going to be a, a second contract guy because of those knees. Now. You remember Miles Jack, obviously, from a couple years ago. Would you say this situation is worse than his? I would, because I don't, I don't think Miles Jack will, I never had his knee cut off or leg cut off. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to say there's a situation worse than that. And I also think Miles Jack's upside was much, much higher, you know, than, than what Josh Sweat's is. I like Josh Sweat. I think for the Eagles, they got him in the fourth round. It's fine. I think it's a good value pick, and I get it. But I would have rather them take it in the fifth round. Fourth round, I'm cool with. I would have rather them gone after a guy like Shaquem Griffin there in the fourth round instead because I'm more I'm less worried about a hand situation than I would about a knee. Yeah. All right, so let's get into the tape here. He, he's basically a power guy. He's got uh, long arms, so 34 5 eighth inch arms. If you're over 34 inches, that's a good thing. So he uses those arms to his advantage. Uh, he likes to play in a four-point stance, get, generates a lot of power from his base, and gets a lot of arm extension. So – uh, we're going to see several examples of that. I'm just going to play these clips, and, and you're going to see this. I mean, he, he gets a lot of power, a lot of bull rushing when, when he rushes the passer. I don't know if we have any examples of that per se, but uh, even, even when he's in the run defense, able to use those arms, disengage, make tackles on, on running backs. You're 100% right, Adrian. You said a great thing there, the four-point stance, right? So let's talk about what's the difference between a four-point and a three-point stance. Four-point stance, see both hands are in the dirt. Left hand and right hand, both hands are in the dirt, flat back. Three-point stance, you have you know one hand in the dirt, your outside arm free. All right, so the pros. Let's talk about the pros of the four-point stance that Josh Sweat's playing here. When you play in the four-point stance, you're going to have better leverage off the ball because you're going to be lower. Think about a boxer. When they throw the uppercut, typically the first thing they do is they bend down, then they explode through. So they get all that power generated and all the leverage from their feet all the way up through their hand. It's very similar in the four-point stance. That's why a lot of players will prefer to four-point stand, especially in goal line situations, so they can be low off the ball and drive the line and back. Here's the negative of it, and this is where the three-point stance is more valuable to some people. You don't have that outside hand free to give a rush move. So if you're late off the ball and you don't get your hands on that offensive player first, your face is going to go right into the freaking dirt and you're going to get smashed. So that's the preference of some people preferring the four-point or the three-point. The one thing I won't say that Sweat does a great job at, and this is, where, this is what would stop me from giving him a higher first-round grade on his talent alone, he's not great off the ball. 
He's not really explosive. He's not the first guy off the ball. And he's playing with a bunch of guys who are NFL-level caliber guys at Florida State. So he gets off the ball probably 50% of the time. He's the first one off the ball. If you want to be a high NFL draft pick, you have to be off the ball 100% of the time, the first guy off the ball. A lot of times he's a little bit late, which might not be the end of the world for some bigger guys. He's only 250 pounds. Yes, he can add the weight, of course. But if you're playing in a four-point stance and you're late off the ball, that's a big freaking deal. Yeah, I, 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 wanna, I did want to kind of break down one play because there, there's a play here where he uh, is able to fight through a double team, and, and I thought that was kind of impressive. So it, it's this clip right here coming up. So this you're going to see here, guys, he's going to fight up double team, gets really low off the ball, fights through it, and then is able to rip through it. Now, of course, the ball comes inside. That ball goes outside. He's got no chance. Yeah. But at the same time, it's because of his pad level here, he doesn't lose a gra- an inch at the point of contact because he's low off the ball. But if you notice here, he's not fast off the ball. So this was a pa- if this was a pass play, he's not getting home at all. But because it's a run play, it looks good for him. Yeah, let, let's see who, uh, who gets off the ball last year. Probably is him. One. One. Yeah, he's like third. Again, if, if we're going to be an NFL player and you're playing an NFL offensive line here in Bama – Got to get off the ball quick, man. Let's see this again. Tackle. The only one that didn't get off sooner was this guy, the, defense, yeah. the only defensive tackle. So there you are. Uh, so, yeah, you, you talked about the difference between a, a three-point stance and a four-point stance, so I'm glad you did that because that was going to be one of my questions. Um, so, so good stuff there. Uh, so – the, the thing about you, you see with it with his tape, it's, it's a lot of the same thing. It's a lot of the bull rush, and uh, obviously you can make these plays on, on running back. So uh, I, I would think he's got to work on, on some of his pass rush moves, and, and we're actually going to get into that temporarily once we uh, kind of let these clips play out. So there, there's a speed rush that he likes to utilize some of the time, but he, he's got a really wide loop uh, when he gets to the quarterback. So uh, I, I want you to kind of break down what he can do to tighten that loop. Yeah, so when we're talking about the loop, a lot of times you hear the hula hoop right drill here. here, okay? So as you can see here, it gets really wide. I mean, it doesn't really shrink the hula hoop. pretty much makes a beeline straight. In the hula hoop, what you want to do is when you need to start to round it, you need to start to dip that shoulder underneath the pads and the hands of that offensive lineman so you can drive him back. So in turn, you now have a sharper angle to the quarterback. Versus here, doesn't make any attempt to even get close to the tackle, just going to run straight by him. And then offensive tackle thinking, okay, if you want to run four yards outside of me, I'm not going to waste time to go get you. You're running yourself out of the play like he does here. Runs himself out of the play. Easy step up here. Good quarterbacks are going to set their feet and make throws or, in Alabama's case, step up and get out of pressure because he runs so freaking wide. Has to improve at dipping that shoulder, fighting leverage with power, and forcing that tackle back in to shrink the straight line to get to that quarterback. Yeah, there's literally no shoulder dip here. And you look at a guy like Derek Barnett, that's what he really does best and why he's able to turn that quarter and, and make it so tight. Uh, so you see this example. And, and the second example, this, this second clip that I have here, that was the best that I saw him on the speed rush in, in terms of how tight he was able to turn the corner. Uh, so that, that doesn't really say a lot. I mean, he, he, the quarterback still gets away here, Jalen Hurts, so – uh, let's see this. Oh, yeah, yeah, good get off there. I mean, it should be third and 13. It's a no-shit situation. It's a pass. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is like these obvious situations here. It's like, okay, we know it's going to be a pass rush, so I don't need to necessarily wait as long. Yep. All right, so we saw those two situations. Now, this is against Jonah Williams, and, you, you know, you talk about the talent uh, of Alabama. This is a 2019 first-round tackle right here. And he puts Josh Sweat to the ground. Yeah, Jonah Williams, real, real quick moment for me, started his freshman year at the right tackle at Alabama. Freshman year was a, yeah. was a starting right tackle at Alabama. Sophomore year went and started left tackle for Alabama. Yeah, he's going to get drafted very high next year. But this is a great example here. Doesn't have elite level power. You know, gets by with power because of pad level on his, and his four-point stance. But if, he, if an offense tackle gets his hands on him, going right into the ground. But again – 250 pounds, he's not exactly that 270 monster physical freak. He pretty much wins off of speed and pad level on the four-point stance. Doesn't really have a lot of secondary pass rush moves. He can teach that. That's not a concern for me. But this is what makes him not necessarily an elite-level player that I would have said, hey, he could have been a first, over, like a first top 20 pick 
if his knee would have been healthy. I think if he is healthy, maybe he's a guy who goes late first, early second, and you know what? Get him in the fourth round. That's damn good value there if, if the knees checks out, of course. Yeah, if you remember during our mock draft, I took him because of the, he was the best value still left on the board. I was a little shocked that he was still available in that fourth round, and, and little, little do we know that he gets picked by the Eagles in the fourth round. Absolutely. You know, again, and it's, and it's all about the knee because the thing is, is a lot of players, they could fail medicals for one team and pass them for another. So either he passed with the Eagles or he got a passing enough grade for the Eagles to say, okay, we'd be comfortable with taking him as a day three guy. Yeah. And you, you talked about the, the limited pass rush moves. Uh, from what I saw, I mean, we, we talked about the, the outside speed rush there. Uh, I, I saw him rarely – I, I don't know if rarely is the right word, but but not consistently, maybe. Uh, he does use a swim move at times. So you got the swim move, the bull rush, and the outside speed rush. But out of those three moves, uh, the bull rush is the only one that he consistently gets into the backfield. The other two, not so much. Especially, as you said, Adrian, if he's not showing good, you know, shoulder dip ability. Yeah. It's hard to be successful in the pass rush, you know, because if you're, if you're going to pass rush standing straight up, it's very, very difficult to be successful. Yep. He's not Derek Barnett. He's not Cameron Wake coming off the edge with that right. shoulder dip, that's for sure. All right, so one more clip here before we depart. Uh, just a short yardage situation. This is another example of him being laid off the ball. Again, it, you can be awesome the four-point stance, laid off the ball. Look, everyone else is moving, and he's like, oh, wait, the ball snapped here? This is on fourth and one. It's fourth down. If you're late off the ball – you might as well just stand on the sidelines because you're not going to do anything helpful if you're laid off the ball. So here we go. We see a one. And this is a tight end too, by the way. This isn't, yeah. this isn't a tackle at Alabama. This is a tight end. You know, Adrian, it could, have been, it could have been a wide receiver. If he's laid off the ball, the receiver's still going to win if he's that laid yeah. off the ball. Yeah, he's – I mean, he's, he's – let's see. Let's take a track here. Let's see. He's probably the last one off the ball. Oh, yeah. He's by far the last one off the ball. Even the nickel is quicker off the ball than him. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. And what's right. bad about this is when you're in the four-point stance, you have the best vision on the ball and also on the offensive lineman's feet. So you can see how quickly they move, and he's still late. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, so that's Josh Sweat. Would you like to uh, – well, we kind of went into that, if you like the pick or not. Um, what do you see him becoming in the NFL? Uh, do you, do, can he be a rotational guy? I mean, is, is he going to be a consistent? I don't see starter here. No, no, not, not, not a starter. Not a starter here. Uh, but a, the guy that could develop, again, everything that we're going to say, Adrian, is based on the name, right? I mean, yeah. if, if he doesn't play after week eight of the season, I'm not surprised. You know, I mean, because that knee, that knee situation is really serious, you know? So – I would say he's a guy who's going to just going to be an additional pass rush guy, a guy you bring in on third down when it's real obvious situations. He goes to a situation in Philadelphia where that's all you really ask him to do, maybe 10 rushes a game. I think that's realistic expectations for him, handful of sacks. Yeah, because there, uh, there was commotions uh, in Philadelphia wondering that w what's going to happen with Brandon Graham. They drafted Josh Sweat. Why would they draft Josh Sweat if, if they have a loaded defensive line? But – I, I, yeah, I don't see it like that. Uh, no, that, this, is, this is a rich get richer situation. This is yeah. not a replacement pick. This is just, hey, let's give more tools in the toolbox. This is not a replacement pick for Brandon Graham. No, because, it, it, again, it's like his knee is so bad that you, you can't ask him to go out there and start every week. Yeah, exactly, especially a, a guy who, you know, is a little thin still at this point in time and is also a guy who's laid off the ball. You can't ask a defensive lineman to have those three issues to go out and start every single down off, you know, out there. Yeah. All right. That's Josh Sweat. Sweaty long cocks, baby. There it is. That's Brendan Albert. I'm Adrian Fedq. You got anything else? You good? That's it. All done. All right. We're out. Yeah, actually, we are all done. That's it. That's the last one. Done, done. done. We're done. See ya. Appreciate it.